One of the really cool features in Vegas Pro 9 is the ability to support the RED camcorder. Now this is real exciting because Vegas does it in a little different way. As you might know, RED now records to the compact flash cards. So one of the things that we can do with Vegas that's really great is we can actually edit right off of this card. I don't recommend you do it, but that's what we're going to set up and show you how to do right now. So we're going to take the card and put it into our card reader here. We just previously shot this on the Bonneville Salt Flats uh, using the red camcorder. And so the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to pop open a, a, a window on our computer telling us that we've put a new card into our computer and it's going to ask us what we want to do with the files. From here, we're going to do everything inside of Vegas Pro 9. So let's take a look. So you can see our window opens up here and it asks us if we want to open the folder to view the files. We'll tell it uh, no, we're just going to cancel out. And we're going to simply refresh our Explorer up here in the Vegas window. And there's our, our 3D files. So these are the native red files. And I've got this set up currently so that when I click on any file, it plays through the auto preview. So let's just click on a file here. And we'll see auto preview begin immediately over there in our trimmer. Let's scroll down to another file here. To, to make it a little easier, let's turn off the preview and the trimmer and we'll just put it inside the, the main preview window here. And there we go, so we can see what's happening with our, our car. So we want that one. Let's grab this file and just drag it down onto the timeline. And let's look at a couple of others here. And I think we like that one. We'll just drag that one also down to the timeline there. There's a nice wide shot that shows the salt flats as they are, so we'll drop that one down onto the, the timeline as well. So now you can see here we've got three separate red files all on the timeline. Now first of all, let's make sure that these are the red native files, so let's right-click the files, let's go to Properties, and go to General. And we can see here that, it, that the uh, file type is red raw, so it's in the R3D format. It shows when it was recorded, and the length, and, and the size, and so forth. So in other words, we know that we're looking at red raw. Let's go look at the size of the file here. It's uh, 4,096 pixels by 2,048 pixels uh, in width. So in other words, we're looking at the red raw file in its native size right there. So the next thing that we want to be sure that we've done is set up our project so that it's ready to show red. Currently our project is set up at 1440 by 1080, so basically it's set up for HDV. So let's come up here to our, our uh, project video properties or click Alt Enter. And in our drop down menu, let's select the 4K 24P, choose Apply, and bang, we're ready to go, just like that. So now we can see our file playback right there. There's a little bit of a trick to running red files inside of Vegas Pro 9. Unless you've got an uber fast computer, you're going to want to run in draft auto mode and be sure that you size the preview window for optimal playback. Otherwise, it's not going to be so smooth. Now, the computer we're using right now isn't really all that fast. It's only a dual core system, so it's uh, kind of old and a little bit slow. And we're running Windows XP, so we're not running anything like 64 bit or anything like that. In other words, running a, a machine that's probably quite common to what a lot of you may have out there. So let's, let's set this up for the most optimal playback right now. We're going to come up to our preview window and we're going to choose that draft auto. And you'll see our quality is still quite good. We'll play this back and see even on a fairly slow computer we're getting pretty good playback uh, frame rates. We're seeing frame rates of, of up to 18, 19 frames a second. Now, if you've got a reasonably fast computer, this will play back easily at the 24p playback setting. Now, keep in mind, we're also playing back off of a compact flash card. So now, we can begin to do our cuts and do whatever edits we want to, to work with here. So, for instance, you know, we might just want to run some splits and, and uh, delete some segments out here. Oh, we like that. Let's run it forward just a little bit farther. And they do their donuts in the salt. And we'll come right about there where he, he uh, goes into his next donut. Stop. Do our, our split. Let's go to the next one. I'm just using JKL here to speed up my playback as I, I run through. So we'll cut that piece out as well. And pull this down and we're good to go. Now one of the cool things that we've also got in here is the ability to access Red Raw. 
and we can do some things in here that we can't do uh, normally inside of Vegas. And this is one of the most exciting things about working with uh, the application is that we can access various features in Red Raw. So let's find a frame that needs a little bit of correction. Let's start uh, right here with this particular one. Now, normally, if we wanted to apply color correction, we'd come over to our video effects and find our color correctors and drag it down and drop it on the file as needed. But in the case of working with Red, we're going to work with it a little bit differently. Let's right-click this file and choose Open in Project Media List. Now, of course, we can also just come over to our Project Media tab and find that file. Now, inside the Project Media tab, we're going to right-click and slide down here to where it says File, Format, Properties. This is something that you'll find new in the Vegas 9 Pro application. So let's click on File, Format, Properties, and this new window opens up. This is great. Let's just slide this window down off to the side so we can see our frame a little bit better. And here we're accessing all of the R3D raw properties, or in other words, the decode properties. So if we want to change the color temperature, shifting it up or shifting it down, so here we are warming it up, or perhaps we want to cool it down a little bit. Of course, that's too far. But just like anything else in Vegas, simply by double-clicking the preference, it takes it right back to its default. Same thing with tint. We can shift that around as much as we want. Exposure compensation. Maybe we've blown out the exposure a little bit, or maybe we uh, have underexposed a little bit. It's great to be able to, to change that. Now, bear in mind that as we're working with these raw properties, we're not adding any noise or, or uh, changing anything in the media itself because we're accessing it at the raw format. Maybe you're already used to shooting the raw format with your DSLR camcorder and you've been working with Photoshop or in uh, Lightroom or some of these other tools where you're accessing the raw file or the raw data in the file itself. This is a great way to process the file without adding any noise. Well, the red decode works exactly the same way. Let's keep looking at what else is available to us in these decode properties. We've also got, of course, gains for each color. So we can go through and adjust all of these. And then let's come down to the user-defined uh, five-point uh, transformation curve. Of course, we've got uh, our, a black where we can crush the blacks up, uh, low to mids, uh, mid-highs, and whites. And so we can see how these curves are already set up and, and pre-set up in the transformation curve. We can also work with these in the camera, of course. We've also got DRX. Now, this is a, a little bit of a conf confusing tool for some people. What the DRX does is, in some cases where you've got a lot of uh, very fine detail, uh, that detail may show up a little bit um, strange. It might show some odd colors in the fringing areas of that detail. And this allows us to reduce or control that fringing. We'll come back down to the very bottom here. We have the gamma curve. We have a linear curve. We switch to linear. You can see the changes there. Or to uh, the Rec 709 space, basically HD space. We can see what that looks like. To red space. And to red logarithmic. We're going to leave that set to red space. And the same thing with our color space. We can use the camera RGB, HD, or Rec 709, or red space, so you can see very small changes taking place in the file. Image detail, we can set this to high, medium, or low. I recommend that you leave this set to medium, but you, know, you need to choose, make your own choices along these lines. If you're going to be down converting this media to standard definition, you definitely don't want to have this set to high. Next, we have an OLPF, or the Optical Low Pass Filter Compensation. You're not going to see a whole lot of change in this image because it doesn't have a lot of dynamic range. We're going to leave it set to off, but that's what the OLPF is, is the Optical Low Pass Compensation. We've also got some image denoising that we can apply. Now, you shouldn't need to use this if the camera was set up properly, but we do have some denoising capability. And finally, we have an ISO adjustment. So we can set this up in case the camera was misadjusted. Now, we've got this set by default to 320. There is um, there's some discussion in the film community about where ISO of the RED camera actually is compared to, say, a, a real 35 millimeter film camera. And RED sets theirs at 320 because that's how they correspond with light meters that are out there. But as, as I say, there's some debate about where this should actually be set. If you make a mistake, we can work with it in the RED RAW decode. But be aware that your camera needs to have its ISO set up correctly before you ever begin shooting. So let's continue. So this allows us to access all of the different features. But what is if we just simply want to go with the clip default, what the camera thinks the shot should have looked like, or what the factory 
thinks the shots should have looked like. So let's go back to clip default. You can see that's a pretty cool color there. We've got some cool blues in the, in the uh, salt. Let's go to the factory default. You can see the factory default warms it up considerably. So there are a few things that we can do with this just very quickly if we want. Now we can access every single one of these files that exact same way all the way through. Now notice as I go from clip to clip, see this is a clip that I edited, but when we come to the next clip, the color space or the, rather the color compensation is quite different. That's because this was one clip that we accessed up here in the project media tab, but this next one is not. So again, we're going to need to right click, open in project media list, right click in the project media list, file format properties, and here's how we're going to access all of those different features in red. You'll need to do this for each of your red clips if you want to work that way. Now the main benefit to working this way is this doesn't slow down your renders or your playback time such as adding a filter on top of the media is going to do. So it allows for a much faster processing time. It also allows us to work without having to recompress the media and most importantly it doesn't add any noise to the media. So this basically gives us all of our color correction and exposure or our levels tools uh, at the same time without having to slow down our renders and without adding noise. I want to show you one last thing that you can do inside the, uh, the red media with the red decode properties and you need to follow the exact way I set this up in order to make this work. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to go to view and open up our video scopes. The video scopes by default fall right into the, the screen. We'll move our histogram over here to the left corner. Make sure we choose update scopes while playing so that that's enabled. Now we're going to right click our media inside of the project media list, choose file format properties and move this out of the way so that we can see our picture but we can also see our scopes and this is where we can really see what we're doing with this five point transformation curve. See how the histogram is, is moving there and we get an idea of exactly what's going on. So We can see what our standard deviation is and we can see what's happening in, in our mid-range colors or mid-levels. So you can see exactly how we're working with all of these different spaces so as we kind of bring down the whites there. So the histogram really allows us a lot of understanding as to what is going on with this five point transformation curve. And I do recommend that you use this uh, user defined five point transformation curve while you've got the histogram loaded up. Now one problem with this is playback is disabled when you do have the red decode properties window open. Mm -hmm. So while we've got this open we can't play our file back although we can when we're working with other plugins in Vegas. So the best way to do this is to park your cursor on the frame that you want to correct. So we're going to choose cancel, come down here and find a little better frame that we, we might want to work with. And there we go, we've got a, a shot a, a shot there we can work with. We'll again right click that, open in file format properties. And this is the, really the best way to work. It's kind of a drag that we can't stop or uh, start our playback when we've got this red decode window open. Um, hopefully this is something that Sony will address in the future. So in the meantime, park your cursor where you can see all of the different details that you might want to modify, then open up the histogram, then open up the red decode properties window and modify your file. So it might take a little bit of time to get used to that particular part of the workflow, but the greatest thing is, is it works really fast. Now there's one last trick I want to show you that you can do with the media here and it runs a little counter to um, the normal Vegas workflow but it works really well when you've got large areas that you want to correct. Let's take a look at this little workflow tip. You can choose cancel here and just select a small area of our video that we want to have play through and let it play. And uh, so as it plays through now we can open up the, our decode properties. You can see what's going on down here in the um, histogram window. As it's playing through we can see our levels changing. So in other words we still have our live playback. And while this is playing through we'll open up our file format properties and you'll notice our loop is still playing. So even though Sony designed this so that we need to park on a frame and do our adjustments, here's a way that you can loop your media and adjust the, the uh, decode properties all at the same time. So just simply create a loop, start the loop in playback, 
then hit the decode button and you'll be able to go in and adjust all the raw features while it's playing back in real time. So there are some ways to work around some of the, the uh, various features of where red isn't so strong in the Vegas tool. Now again, keep in mind, we're playing this back off of a compact flash card. So that's the real exciting part. So just to summarize really quickly, put your computer into draft auto mode and that's going to give you your best playback rate unless you've got an uber fast computer you're still probably going to be wanting to work in the draft modes if you're doing fine color correcting from time to time switch into best full be sure that you've got a computer that can handle that 4k file resolution if you're going to be watching this isn't in best full i've seen this crash a few laptops so just be sure that you've got the ram that'll handle that and that's really all there is to it so with that, that brings us to the conclusion of this particular tip for Vegas Pro 9 and working with the RED camera.